Hey Logo Designers, welcome to another devlog for Logo Package Forge. This is an exciting devlog because this is the final devlog before we go into our beta. Our beta is going to be from April 7th to April 18th, 2025. Um, if you're watching this and you want to get in on the beta, then please just email me at michael at logopackage.com and I will try to add you to the list. I'll put that email in the description below as well. So let me show you where we're at. Logo Package Forge is an extension that allows you to organize your fonts inside of Adobe Illustrator and also to generate logo concepts. So you can see here I have a long list of all of my fonts and I can favorite them, I can hide them, and I can create custom sets. So we'll look at these two sets that I've already created. I have a fashion set. So these are fonts that I would typically use for a fashion brand. And then I have a clean set, which is basically just sans serif, but I wanted to name it clean because I wanna show that you can organize however your brain thinks. So that's the basics of the organization. Those features have been implemented for a long time. Now we'll look at the logotype tab. So this is how we generate concepts. I have this brand, uh, it's a premium handbag brand called Oliver Chang. So I'm going to type in Oliver Chang and quickly in the preview here, I can see what this logotype might look like set in these different fonts. But the power of this extension is actually generating these live text editable logotypes. So I'm going to click make logos and that's going to generate a new grid document where we can start to play around with concepts and take a look at how this type might look in many different arrangements. So we have here the fonts. It's all editable, you know, so I could come in here and make changes to these fonts if I want to, but they're presented in a nice grid. And one of the updates we've made since the last devlog is the grid now they get a grid position identifier. You can see that this is the first column and the B row, and that's going to help you identify which concepts you like more easily. But also we will show what typefaces are used in the generation above as well. So you don't have to click in to find what font was used. But this is just a very simple generation using the fashion set. And now maybe I wanna see what this would look like stacked. So I'll add another type line and I'm just gonna move Chang down to the bottom line there. I'm going to use this justified alignment so that all of the lines of type are the same width and I'll make logos. And we're still in this fashion set so it's gonna be the same fonts from before, but now we can see them stacked up and see how we like this. Another thing I'd like to try with this logo is a tagline. So I'm actually going to put Chang back up at the top and I'm going to set a tagline here in all caps and do premium handbags. So however you type into this field is how it will show up on the artboards. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to do some font pairing. I want to see what this tagline might look like compared to all of these different fashion fonts. I'm going to target the tagline and I'm then going to choose a target font. So this is the font that the targeted line is going to be set in. And I want that font to come from the clean set. So I'll select clean and then I will go to the drop down and let's just do Montserrat. And then I choose a partner set. The partner set is the set that the line which is not targeted is going to be generated in. So in this case, I'm going to choose fashion. What this setup means is that premium handbags, the targeted font, will get the target set of Montserrat Medium. The untargeted lines will all be set in all of the fonts from fashion. Let's take a look at what this does. I'll make the logos and I kept that justified setting. So the tagline is going to be the same width as the main logo type. And now what we can see is that we have the Montserrat typeface and it's compared with all of the fonts from the fashion set. Now, maybe we found a fashion font that we really like, but we're not sure about our tagline font. 
So let's say that we really like this Lustria. All we have to do is change our target. So let's go to Oliver Chang and choose the target font of Lustria from the fashion set. And then our partner set for the tagline is going to be the clean set. And now we're going to get the, the opposite situation where our tagline is in all the different fonts, but our logo type is in a chosen font. And now we can compare and figure out what might be the best combination. I think I like Montserrat the best. So this is something we can do when we have multiple lines of text. Another thing we can do with multiple lines of text is change their stacking alignment. So right now we're doing a vertical alignment and I want to do a horizontal alignment. So let's change things up here. Let's untarget uh, that font and I will delete the premium handbags line. And now what I want to see is I want to see Oliver Chang in two different colors. So I'm going to put Oliver at the top and Chang at the bottom. And I will change my alignment from vertical to horizontal. And I'm just going to put a little bit of gap in between these two words. So it looks like it's typed out instead of them being jammed together. And I'm going to use that fashion set but I wanna see what it looks like when Oliver is red and Chang is black. So I've changed the color in the type line here and we have this horizontal alignment. So now let's see what this looks like. Okay, so we're getting all of the fashion fonts generated, but we have this nice division of color. You can also use this feature to do the font pairing that we did with the tagline and the logo type, but choose different fonts within the same logo type. So in this case, we have the horizontal alignment. I'm going to take Oliver and I'm going to make that a clean font. So let's make this um, Montserrat and then we're going to pair it with the fashion set. So let's see how this looks. Okay, we're getting Montserrat, and then we're getting the fashion fonts paired with it. And these are all aligned to the baseline. Obviously, the X heights in some of these are different, um, and you'd have to do some tweaking afterwards, but you can very quickly get a sense of how these two fonts will pair with each other. So this is a really powerful feature. Let's take a look at logo marks. Okay, so here are some potential logo marks for this logo. I'm going to just choose the first one here and click set mark in the logo mark tab. And now we have this artboard off to the side of our grid document, which shows the logo mark that we are currently working with. So I'm going to double check my logo type here. I just have Oliver Chang, I have the fashion font, and on the logo mark settings, I have a top center alignment and a vertical stack. We also have a scale setting, and this is a percentage of our sort of total allowable area for the logo mark to be generated. So if we do 100%, the logo mark will be the same width as the logo type, all the way down to 1%. And then we also have a gap setting. This is a percentage of how much space there is between the logo type and the logo mark. So I'm just gonna use these default settings and see what we get. All right, so it's generating those logo types now and we get to see this mark very quickly paired with all of these fonts in the fashion set and we can get a good sense of what that looks like. Maybe we want to try a horizontal alignment. So let's go to horizontal and We'll go back to our icons. I'm gonna try this icon on the right here. So we'll remove the existing icon or the already set icon and we'll set a new mark. Now I feel like I, I probably want this to be a little smaller. So I'm going to do um, something like 35 and 15 for my scale and gap settings. And let's make this logo. All right, so now you can see we have a totally different sort of look and feel here by using another mark and comparing it with these fonts. The only thing that has really changed um, since our last devlog 
for the logo mark settings is that now every one of these alignments in horizontal and vertical is functioning. So between the horizontal alignment with six different alignment options and the vertical alignment with an additional six alignment options, you have the ability to align your logo in 12 different ways. So let's just quickly take a look at some of these other options. They're a little bit less common than the standard sort of centered above or to the left of the logo type but we want to accommodate all of these different layouts. Here is a layout with the logo underneath the logo type and to the left. Now, some time where this might make sense is, let's say we just wanted to simply have a line beneath the logo, right? So let's give this, let's make a stroke here. And I'm going to set this line as the logo mark. And I think I'd like it left aligned and I'm going to go with maybe let's go like 80% and I don't want any space between this line and the logo. And now I can do this bottom left alignment, make logos, and we'll see something that maybe makes a little bit more sense. So 80% doesn't quite seem to be enough. But again, all of these logos are editable. So at any time, if you wanted to come in, you can just grab this anchor point, pull it over, and now you can see what this sort of underlined logo concept might look like. This is pretty much the full extension, and we're definitely going to be testing the extension with all of these features. But hopefully you can see that in just a few minutes, we were able to very quickly get a wide range of concepts for this logo and figure out maybe what direction we want to head in with our final artwork, which of course will be tweaked and refined by you as the designer. We're not trying to create a logo making extension here. This is just for sketching out your concepts and getting an overview of the sort of landscape of possibilities within what your own mind has created. So again, if you'd like to sign up for the beta, it is between April 7th and April 18th, 2025. You can just email me, michael at logopackage.com and I will try to get you added to the list. But if you see this after April 7th, uh, the beta invite will be closed and no more people will be added. So hope to see you in the beta and thanks for watching.